Egon Wellis. The first time I ever heard that name was in reference to his work as a scholar of Byzantine chant. This is a long time ago I heard that. I think I also, also heard about the same time that he was a composer, but I didn't really know anything else about him. And I just filed it away. I thought, well, I should look into that at some point. Um, and, you know, a lot of the issues that we deal with in 20th century music have to do with neglect. There's a lot of music that is just not generally brought out in front of the public. Um, so we have um, in Egon Wellis a really good example of that. I think really this is a composer that deserves to be heard a lot more frequently than he often is. One of the many things that we see in early 20th century music is a movement away from common practice period approaches. Common practice period going back to the early 17th century and at least you know, uh, coming up through the 19th century. Wellis's interest in music from before the common practice period, it seems to me, is one very natural way for a composer uh, to kind of escape that common practice period and find a new way of thinking about music, uh, experiencing music. Of course, there are other composers who did that of that same era. Famously, Claude Debussy uh, finds other ways of organizing uh, a piece of music. Um, and well as his teacher, Arnold Schoenberg, famously, um, you know, profoundly influenced music of that era. Um, well as is an interesting composer for a lot of different reasons, but that, for, for sure, that scholarly side of things, the historic musicological side of things, may constitute a way of rethinking uh, a lot of the assumptions that previous generations have held. Uh, how do you stop worrying about tonality and start thinking about other things in music that are more important um, uh, for the long term? And uh, for sure, Scholars who know about music before then, uh, before, say, Monteverdi, um, music prior to that, um, they have a perspective, which is the long view, uh, which allows for uh, an approach in comp composition today. I think Wellas, you know, really does represent an historic perspective. He's not just breaking the mold. He is reasserting things from old, older times. And um, you know, his music really shows that sophistication, I think. Uh, even the titles of these present pieces are, you know, they're general, but they're not vague. These are specific titles that have specific historic usage. I mean, it, like the third one, for instance, Vision. There are a number of other pieces I know that are entitled Vision, particularly from the 19th century. Um, there are other pieces with the other titles that he uses um, so the, you know, in this collection. And the general title, um, Epigrams, it's not epitaphs, it's not epilogues. It's a very specific literary reference, uh, going back to the ancient Greeks and um, having new meanings in the 19th century usage uh, and then applied to music. Uh, so there's definitely a mind here at work that is um, you know, really taking a lot of culture and history into account.